everybody. How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys, this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. Hey, everybody. It is Tuesday, July 26th, and a friend gets a return to the podcast today. New music, more new music on the way, and talking about touring, I say, for the first time as a mother. Yes, we have Madam Mayhem back on the podcast today. Great friend of the podcast, and I can't wait for you guys to hear the interview that we did with her. But first, I want to thank today's sponsors and support for the podcast. Well, it's July. It's late July. You know it's summertime. And everyone a lot, especially a lot, talks about looking good for those warmer months. But few have the balls to do it. We all want to do it, but few have the balls to do it. Well, it's time to nut up or shut up and take the easiest step into looking sexy this summer by using Manscaped. So, Manscaped. It's ultra smooth package. Make sure that you have the proper care down there. And the Boxers 2.0 gives you the perfect stage to show off that new look. And these products, let me tell you, they may make you look hot. But your cleanly shaved nethers will keep you cool. And the Boxers 2.0 patented jewel pouch technology, you know, stuff that protects your family jewels, will keep your boys from turning any beach day into a swamp day. You ever have swamp? Feeling down there, swamp ass, that kind of stuff, ah, it just is, it is not good. So dive head first into the summer by joining the 5 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. I mean, I trust Manscaped with a lot of different things. I mean, these these 2.0 boxers though, and that jewel pouch, man, gives you the comfort you need, makes sure you don't swamp ass, but also gives you the support you need for your boys. And I mean, help you get the cleanest boys down there, cleanest shave down there with the lawnmower 4.0. It's got, you know, skin safe technology. So you have less nicks down there, almost no nicks down there. Let me tell you, no one likes nicks down there. So I mean like nicks on the skin, not nicks as the, the name I'm talking the skin nicks where you're like, ah, no one wants that. They got the, the lawnmower 4.0 skin safe technology to make sure you're preventing those nicks on top of that. It's also waterproof. It's got an LED light as well, so you can see what you're doing down there. And I will forever stand by their crop preserver ball deodorant. And the reason I say that is because, well, let's be honest. I got big legs. I go to cops all the time, and I'm constantly down there, so I got problems with chafing. Since I started using the crop preserver anti-chafing ball deodorant in 2020, chafing that's been a thing of the past since then, man. So definitely suggest using that. So again, dive headfirst into the rest of summer by joining the 5 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get 20% off and free shipping on your entire order by going to manscaped.com forward slash CPP. That way you'll get that 20% off and that free shipping. You can use that discount code at checkout or you go to manscaped.com forward slash CPP. We are also sponsoring the When We Were Hungry Music Festival happening in Las Vegas, October 20th and 21st of 2022. Turning memes into dreams, pancakes in the pit, Will from Modern Day Escape, Mal Levy. Man, they put this stuff together. Again, a meme turned to a whole full-fledged festival, two-day festival in Vegas. You're going to be out there because pancakes in the pit this is the festival for people this is if you miss warp tour this is the festival for you they've got bands like modern day escape well of course modern day escape they've got bands like outlier they got bands like saving vice they got bands like along came a spider they've got another band like varsity and they got palisades and they got many more. Why did I mention those six? Because those six have been in the podcast before. They got many other bands on there like Dropout Kings, Tiny Moon Parts, the original lineup of a Skylar Drive, and many, 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 many more. So go and check that out. Go get your tickets now at whenwewerehungryfestival.com. Link, uh, link is in the description of the podcast. Join me there October 20th and 21st of 2022. Pancakes in the Pit, Memes in the Dreams. I'll see you there. Look for the guy in the Corporate Crusher Podcast shirt and the Milwaukee Brewers hat. You'll find me. Let's mosh. Let's have some fun out there. October 20th and 21st. Now to our feature presentation. Madam Mayhem returns to the podcast, everybody. And last time we talked to Madam Mayhem in 2021, she was releasing singles. And now singles are still coming out. This new one, Inside Out, just released. And we talk all about the single. We talk all about, you know, their future plans. And we talk about touring, especially their first tour since the pandemic, in which it was Madden Mayhem's first tour as a mother. So we got we actually go into a good amount of that in the mentality that she had of touring as a mother, what it was like to, you know, have to be away for your child for the first time. And just also, you know, really, I would say, you know, understanding the balance between going out on the road and doing what you love there 
and also do what you love being with your family. So there's a lot of great stuff here for you. So please, please welcome our friend Mad and Mayhem back to the podcast. Are you ready? Let's go! Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and boys and girls, listeners of the Court Progression Podcast. Back in 2021, I had this incredible person on the podcast. And ever since then, I'm like, I got to go see them live. I got to go, you know, consume more of the music. I got to get more of it. In February, I finally got that chance. Saw her play live here in Wisconsin, got to meet her. And she ended up playing a brand new song that wasn't recorded. I was like, oh my God, we need to hear more of this. Recently, she just released a brand new song called Inside Out, which is a different song than the one I heard. But my God, you definitely should go listen to it. So please welcome back Madam Mayhem to the Corporate Rush Podcast. So Madam Mayhem, welcome back. Thanks for the intro. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, I've got to get me. I've got to give that like full on, you know, like energetic intro because I, I was it. listening inside out before I started this. I'm like, okay, now I need to really pump up the energy. What's going to get me going that way and that positive uplifting energy? The new Beartooth single. Let's roll it for like 10 minutes and now I'm ready to go. There you go. That's the way to do it. <laughs> that is the way to do it. So starting out with, I mean, how's everything been going for you? Because I, I haven't seen you in four and a half months since the, the tour came through with uh, Uncured and Versus Me through here in Wisconsin. Yeah. And the podcast audience hasn't seen you since I believe it was March or April of 2021. So, I mean, how's everything been? Oh, it's, uh, it's been great. There's been a lot going on um, since then. Um, you know, uh, life, uh, baby, um, tour, as you saw, um, which was so much fun. And then right now uh, we are working on brand new music, including the song you heard uh, that we played live that was unrecorded. We are going to record that and it's going to be part of something bigger down the line, which we can talk about, uh, which I'm very excited about. Um, and then, yeah, just releasing this new song Inside Out, um, which I'm so proud of. I wrote with Keith Wallen again. And so, uh, yeah. That's like good. I wrote it with Keith Wallen again. That guy is one hell of a guy because he didn't oh, yeah. he write uh, the one that we talked about in 2021 as well. Yeah, he he's written he's co-written a few of my or almost almost all of my most recent <laughs> uh, singles with me. There's been a few in between that I didn't co-write with him per se, but uh, mo most of them uh, have been with him, which is pretty cool because he's he's awesome and we we write really well together. I think and uh, we get along really well, so that that helps too. Well, when you listen to the songs that you and him have done together as well with co-writing, it's just like the vibe of the whole entire thing. It's just everything flows from one section to the next. And it doesn't feel like there's any weird breaks in between there, any uncomfortable or any just like, okay, this doesn't seem like it fits. Everything flows from one section to the next, one part of the song and next perfectly. So you definitely found someone who like as a potential co-writing partner for some of these songs, you definitely found someone that absolutely hits on the vision that you're trying to go for. Yeah, it really helps when you, you're on the same page with the people in the room with you. So <laughs> I'm very thankful for that. Absolutely. I still I think I still owe him a pizza, though. So I, I got to wait for him to come around somewhere around me. And I'm just going to show up with a big giant pizza. And be like, hey, Keith, oh, I, I promise this back in 2021. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't forget. Oh, I love it. Do it. It'll it'll be funny. But I think I got to remember to. It's we got. You think he said it was something like do like a veggie supreme one. I was like, OK. I'll do that and I'll bring them little tiny like pepperoni pizza for myself because, well, I just like pepperoni. What can I say? Right. <laughs> that's just that's just my style. But again, it was fantastic finally being able to see you perform live back in February of 2020 because I was like, I, I've tried to I'm trying to hit 50 different shows this year. 50. The one I saw with you was number three on the year. So I was like, I'm getting the year kickstarted on the right note. Like, let's keep this rolling. Let's keep this going. Right. And so far, I mean, not going to lie. You started you you and the you and everyone on that tour, Uncured versus me. You guys started out on a great note for me, and then the rest of the way it's just been. Bloop. So thank you for getting the you know great tour year of 2022 kickstarted for me. Thank oh, you. Of course, I'm so glad you were able to come out and make it. Like when I saw you, I was like, oh my god, you're here! It was so cool. Yeah, it was like I saw a friend. Yeah, it was like I finally I saw a friend that I haven't seen since you know since the plague. Yeah, exactly. That's that's kind of how I've been saying them every time I've seen like a, like someone I've had in the podcast that I haven't seen yet or I've interviewed a while ago. It's like, oh, I haven't seen you since the play. I go, oh, hey, how's right. it going? You want a beer? It's right. like, oh, you want? <laughs> Always ends up like that. But of course, you went on the tour with Uncured and of course versus me. And I mean, that was like, I think it was like a, at least a month long tour, maybe a month at and least, a half. I remember correct. Yeah, I think it was over. It was over a month for sure. I'm pretty sure. Honestly, it feel it feels so long ago, which is crazy. Um tours happen like that like they happen so quickly and then you're like okay but I'm still kind of happy like because performing is my favorite thing so touring 
therefore is my favorite thing. But after a long tour like that, you're, you're happy to be home for a hot second. But then like time goes by and you're like, wait a minute. I, what, when was the last time I toured? Like, it feels like forever. So yeah, it, it feels like a lot longer ago than it actually was, but it was, it was really fun. I think that's kind of just like anything that anybody's done this year as well. Cause even I was looking back and I'm like, wait, that feels like it was really long ago. But then again, that was like, for me, when it comes to shows, that was like 25 or 26 <laughs> concerts ago. So I'm like, I got to remember all this stuff. It's just, of course, now that, you know, everything, you know, live music fully back, everyone's fully back out on the road. It's just, I, for me personally, I don't want to miss out on any of it because I enjoy it so much. So any chance I get to go see someone, I'm just like, yep, I'm that's, there. That's awesome. So it's like we're making it happen. So if you're looking back at that tour with Uncured and Versus Me, like what do you remember most about that tour? What were some of the highlights of it? Be, and what was it like touring with those two bands as well? Because I remember I saw you, I think it was on the fourth date, but I mean, there were a lot of other dates on the back end as well. So what was it like on that tour? What was it like touring with those guys and everything in between? Well, I, I mean, for me, it was really special, I think, because it was like the first time. I mean, my bands and I got to see each other only a couple times uh, during lockdown and the pandemic time. And so it was really special to be able to like be with them and hang out with them. And like, you know, because normal and because and everything else that we we had done on our way to this, like during lockdown, like it was either virtual or like. I think we did we did a music video together. We worked on a live a live stream together, but like that was really it. And so this was really exciting because I mean this is what we do. We perform live, like we do it together on stage. We feed off each other's energy, and so that was really special. Just to it, it felt like a really cool reunion um, that we hadn't had in a really long time. And it was also really cool because I got to meet all the fans again and I got to see familiar faces and meet new people. And, you know, as you know, I, I work at the merch after my set. And so, um, I mean, I, I genuinely enjoy doing that. It's really fun to meet everyone and, and to kind of watch the rest of the show. And so it, it just kind of felt like getting back in the groove of, of, you know, of what it was before. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, when you take a look back, you know, think about 2019 and before the whole entire pandemic, even early 2020 as well. It's kind of like you had that groove, you had that feel of going out and playing live, connecting with everybody. Then all of a sudden, March of 2020 hits and we all get shut in our houses, shut in our rooms. It's like, we can't go anywhere. What is going on? And for all of us fans of live music or from yourself on the performance side of things, we're all sitting here just like, no! On both sides, as a performer and as a fan, I was freaking out, you know, because I go to shows too, you know, so it was, uh, yeah, I definitely felt everyone's, you know, pain, um, but I'm glad, you know, that we're able to get out there again. Um, it was a scary time for a while. I mean, I know that some people are still suffering with it, so I'm not, I'm not going to go on and say it's over. Um, I want to be sensitive to that because that, that's important, but also I'm just really glad that we were able to get back out there and I'm glad that we're, you know able to do these things again, because for, for us and for our mental health, I think it was really important for us to, as, as well, you know. Can you go a little bit more into that? Because I, I love talking about the mental health side of things, especially when it comes to music, whether it's listening to music, recording it, or especially experiencing live music, whether it's on stage or whether it's in the crowd as well. So going out on tour, what was that like for your mental health in more of that positive light? Yeah. I mean, for me, this so as much as I love writing and recording, it's it's very fun to be in the studio and create. Um, the stage and performance and being able to sing my songs live is what I've always loved to do. Um, ever since I was like a baby, I know that sounds crazy, but as soon as I could be on a stage, I was on a stage, and so that's really my home and my comfort. And so to be able to be out on stage again and then to have crowds, um who kind of like, it's, it's like your rock and metal family, right? Like these are people that no matter if we have different backgrounds or no matter what you're going through, like we all come to the same place to experience the same thing, whether you're the performer or you're the audience. And so that's always been such a special thing for me. And so for me to be able to experience that every night after not having it for so long, you know, there's something to be said for that live interaction that we weren't able to have for so long. And that's really where I thrive. So um, I was very happy about it. Yeah. It was like finally back in your element. Yes. Exactly. And even like from the other side too, I totally can see where you're coming from just because again, going to so many shows that I have already, the thing is, is like, I always do this. I always wear the same hat to every single show. Not because, you know, I like wearing a dirty hat or anything. Don't worry. I still, I clean it from time to time, but it's just because 
with seeing so many people at so many of these shows, especially in the crowd, it's I get to know some of these people. There's not a lot of times, especially when, you know, the music is rolling, everything's loud, everyone's jamming out. Or especially for me, you know, all of a sudden that mosh pit form, I'm just like a little kid, like, ooh, yay, and just go <laughs> crazy. It's something where I don't, I recognize people's faces and I, but sometimes I just don't remember their names. And it's like, how do I make it like a remembrance point? Always wear the same hat. And people come up to me based off of that. And it's like, I, especially ever since, you know, live music came back and I started doing that. It was like, I started, finally started seeing people that I had not seen since like 2019. Once again, I finally got to talk with these people once again, you know, be in these crazy crowds and be in these crazy pits them and just feel the most present in that moment where nothing else mattered all that mattered was the fact that the music that was playing was awesome the band that was up on stage was giving it their all and in the crowd we were feeling that positivity and we were doing just the same and nothing else mattered except for the enjoyment that we were having at that moment right then and there exactly exactly don't know any other way to really put it besides no, that was like, perfect oh. it's like yeah. it's it, for me it's like a home away from home in a way 100 percent. that's exactly what it is no, absolutely. So, of course, you know, being and then not only that, but especially also, you know, knowing a good number of the bands that I'm going to see play live as well and being able to go up and actually, you know, interact with them face to face and not just over like Zoom or on a camera on a podcast like this. That's something I've like added on to it that I really enjoy just because now it's something where, you know, especially with this podcast, it's my favorite thing to do. It's just like, this is the thing that no matter what happens, my energy level could be at the absolute bottom. All of a sudden I see that little icon and says, yeah, hey, Madam Mayhem's, you know, ready to join the call. I'm just like, energy is like, here we go. That's and it. it just like, that just brings me so much happiness to the point where it's like being able to connect at a more like in a person to person level it, with that. It just, I don't know. It just makes me even more happy. Just like creating that positivity. I just, I, I'm kind of, you know, rambling out a little bit now, but I'm like, positivity, that's the key. Absolutely. <laughs> Just keep going on with that. But of course, you know, I know we mentioned this, you know, before we jumped on the call, but, you know, with this being your first tour, especially as a mother, what was that like, especially being on tour as like first tour, first time away from your child as well? Like, what was that like? What were some of the, maybe the challenges that you experienced in that? Like, what was your mindset through that? Because especially from my standpoint, like, I don't think I'm ever going to go through something like that where, you know, being on this, like on crazy music tours, having a child at home. So it's just, I want to, I want to know exactly like, you know, what was going through your head, what was going through and what was the experience like for you? Because it, again, this is just something that, but even before I, you know, hit the record button, this is something that was always going to be really interesting to me to hear your perspective on. Yeah. I mean, so this was my first time leaving my baby. Also, I mean, he was very young. He's still very young, obviously. It's only been a few months, but um, it, it was weird. But it, it was weird internally with my emotions because I was so excited to go out, right, and play and be on the road and see everyone. But also, I was like, I what do I do? I don't want to leave my baby, but I wasn't going to bring my baby. Um, and so um, it was it was hard. I mean, I have a very supportive uh, family at home. Um, uh, shout out to my husband who uh, also has his own career separately and is still managed to stay home with the kid while I was on the road and on tour. So thanks to him. But um, I mean, it was awkward because I was so happy. It was really conflicting. Right. Because and, and this is I feel like it's always going to be like this from now on, which is totally fine, because as I said, stage is my happy place and touring is what I love to do most. So I'm not going to I, I had never had any intention to stop doing that. Um like even like before I had kids, like if we're talking about kids, I was like, okay, I'll have them, but I I'm not stopping. Right. Um, so it, it was, it was important to me that, you know, I don't leave for like a year at a time <laughs> or anything like that. Um, you know, I got to come home sometimes, but I was still going to tour and, um, I just, I missed him a lot. Uh, I have a son. And so, um, yeah, it was so much fun. But then like when you have those little lulls and you're in your bunk and you're just like, oh, I'm on my baby. You know, it's like it's this it's this mix. And of course, like everybody at by the end of the tour is rolling their eyes because I'm like, look, here's a photo of my baby. Like and before you have a kid, you're like, oh, my God, no one wants to see a picture of your kid. Like I was that person. I was like, no one cares. But then when you have one, you're like, I don't care if you care or not. Here's a photo of my baby. So like 
<laughs> there was a really big shift there, um, which was hilarious um, to everyone around me. And I guess now to myself, um, but it was, it was interesting. I mean, it was really hard to be away from him, but I love what I do so much. And I was so happy uh, doing what I do that it kind of evened it out. And so hopefully, you know, when he grows up, he'll understand that, you know, mommy has to go away for work sometimes, but you know, but when I'm home, I'm with him like almost all the time. So it kind of like evens out. So it's, it's all about basically finding that balance between your happiness of going on tour, being on stage and the happiness that you get when, you know, being with your son, being with your family and just balancing that out so that you can, basically give the full support and the full just you know focus on both those things and hope that you know eventually you know as your son grows up that he understands that as time goes on you know you're gonna have to go away from for work for you know maybe a month at a time two months at a time but it's never gonna be for this like you know like a year-long process like not like yeah. a motley crew doctor feel good type tour where it's gonna be two years long and you're never and if it is home. i'm gonna come home in between you know what i mean like those guys, i'm sure like when you go when when like some of those bigger acts go on tour i'm not gonna speak for them but i'm pretty sure like there's like a couple days in between where they like come home for a bit and then they go back out again and then they you know i I'll figure it out when, when that problem arises and I'm on tour for a year, we'll figure out how I can get back here a few times <laughs> once that happens. But, um, yeah, basically, uh, I just, I wore my, I definitely wore myself out a lot more because, you know, you're worrying about, you know, you're a worried mother. That's just standard. Um, but you're also, you know, doing what you love to do more than anything in the world. And so you, I figured it out. I mean, it worked. No, you know, everything turned out okay. He's fine. You know, there's no emotional scarring. You know, he was so young also at the time. He probably had no idea I left. So, you know, now I feel like he might start to notice a little more, but he, had, he, had, he didn't care. He was fine. <laughs> it was totally cool. I was freaking out. He was fine. Yeah, he, he was fine. He was hanging out with dad. He was having a good time. You know, they were just, they were, they were sitting around, you know, watching, um, watching college basketball, having a good time. I don't know what they were doing. I'm just, you know, right. having some fun with it. <laughs> yeah, they were just chilling. And but, it's, but it seems like kind of like when it comes to finding that balance, especially, you know, it's, you know, you being away from your son, especially on tour, of course, as much, you're going to end up worrying. Hell, whenever I was away for like, you know, just a week or something, away, like when I was younger, all of a sudden, like my mom would just be like freaking out at times, like, oh my God, what's he doing? Where is he? It's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm not very far. I'm, I'm right here. You don't got to worry about me kind of thing. But it's trying to find that balance between, you know you're going to end up feeling like that, but not feel like that so much to the point where it ends up hindering, you know, the concert experience, hindering the live performance experience. Exactly. So it seems like you found that balance between, you know, being fully present in the moment when, you know, when the show's going on, when you're on stage, when you're meeting all these people, when you're connecting with all these people. And then when it comes, you know, when you're on the road going between one stop to the next, it's just all of a sudden that's when it's, that kind of emotion starts to come out. So you can, let yourself feel that in the moment and then be on the more, you know, folks on the positive, folks on the happiness side in the moment when it's needed most, especially on stage and connecting with all those people that are at those shows. Exactly. I mean, cause again, that's, that's where I'm most comfortable. Right. So it, it kind of just turns on and I had the stage before I had the kid. Right. So like that's, that it feels very familiar and it, it's home to me. And so it was very easy to be able to turn that on and off, you know? No, oh, absolutely. And not only that, but especially doing this when your son is, I, I, I think it was like one under a year old at that point. Yeah. He is just that, turned, he turned one recently. So yeah. So, so I'm assuming He's only a, a few big, months old. <laughs> yeah, so I'm assuming there's a big one, like one year old birthday party that happened, you know, big giant balloons and uh, trying to think what, what are one year olds into these days? I have no idea. Nothing. Cause they're one. <laughs> it's, it's just, these are the things you learn. Uh, they don't care. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> understandable but again yeah. doing it at such a young age and it's something where you're already getting to uh, go through that process you already went through that process once so you have an understanding of what it's going to be like going forward as your son grows up and you know maybe as your family grows in the future who knows what to expect at that point you know life throws us many different curveballs in many right. different times but you already have that you have that first time done that's the thing i'm trying to say is that first that first time going out on tour after having your son that is completed. You've already gone through that process. And it was during a time where, you know, cognitive memories are not really happening right. at that point. Yeah, yeah definitely. And and right before that tour um, in January, I did ship rocked for a few days and my husband actually came with me. Um, 
And so we were both freaking out, <laughs> um, but it was only a few days. So that was like the test run. It was like, okay, if I can survive this, I can survive a tour. And so that, you know, you got to take the baby steps and then rip off the band aid. And now I'm totally comfortable with it. And I know it'll be hard every time. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to lie and say, it's not going to be hard, but um, my passion hasn't changed. And my desire to go out and tour and perform live has not changed at all. And, and um, you know, so, but that does, that's not always the case for all people. Um, but for me, um, you know, I'm just as motivated and determined to do this and as passionate to, to perform as I've ever been. And so just got to make it work. I'll say keep that passion and keep that motivation because when it comes to happiness, it's from just the way you're speaking as well. From what I'm picking up is, you know, your happiness, especially deriving it from the stage, driving from the live performance is there. You also have happiness when it comes to your family, when it comes to being with your son and everything around there. And you don't want to end up sacrificing one for the other. You want to find a way to make sure that you're both, you're doing both and you're both present with both when you're at that moment and yeah. have, Having that mentality, having that understanding, having the motivation to do it, I mean, keep it rolling, keep it going because it's 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 one you get one chance at life. It's and it's your life, so do it the way that you want to do. It's going to make you happy, and along with you know being the best support that you can be for your son, and also enjoying your time on the road as well, performing, exactly. li living your life on the stage as well. Exactly. Exactly. Now, there is one thing that you did mention that I do kind of want to jump a little bit further into because it was something I did pick up on. I actually have talked about on a podcast before with uh, Tyler from the band Hollow Front. It was about, you know, as your child grows older, it's like, you know, you having to go away for work, go on tour as well. Is he going to know that, you know, it's like you still love him and you're still going to have that support there? Like, what's that kind of worry like? Because I actually experienced that from the other side as uh -huh. a kid. So I can kind of like I want to see kind of where you're thought process is where your worry is because I can also give the other side of the perspective as well, especially from a kid who grew up with something similar. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I have a few band members that also have kids and, but they're older. And so, um, they, they go through it all the time. And so I kind of learn from observing and I'm not going to like start talking about their stuff, but, um, uh, you know, it's definitely hard. I'm sure it's hard. Um, but I think it's all about communication I think that's going to be the biggest thing when the time comes. And I think some times are going to be easier than others. And some days are going to be easier than others. But um, what's, I guess, most important is, you know, making sure that I FaceTime or, you know, talk to like I FaceTime that kid like a hundred times a day. <laughs> um, and he doesn't speak or know what a phone is yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I can just imagine like as, like, I'm just, I'm just gonna be more annoying when I'm not around. Cause I'm going to be like calling and checking in. And so I don't think I'll ever be good at just like leaving. <laughs> like I, you're still going to get sick of me at some point. Right. Like whether it's virtually or in real life. And so I'm not that concerned, but it's definitely something that I, I observe with, with whether it's my bandmates or other um, friends of mine that are on the road that have older kids. And it's definitely, I'm sure it's definitely hard. Um, but I think there's also eventually a time where it'll click and they'll get it. And as long as you spend as much time with them as you humanly can, when you're not, you know, away, I guess, you know, I'll do my best. All I can say to that really at this point is, well, in summation is, my God, you basically have like the mindset right for this. Oh, not, good. Not, not, <laughs> Thank you. Cause, good to know. Because yeah, like for me, when I was growing up, especially as I got into like, as I got into school and everything, it was, I would really only ever see my dad maybe one day out of the week. And it wasn't that it was like he was traveling for work. It was something where I would go to school and he'd be sleeping because he worked second shift. Right. I come home from school, he's at work. And then I go to bed, he's still not home yet. So I didn't get to see him, you know, Monday through Friday. Saturday rolls around, he would work in the mornings as well and working in the afternoon. So it was like, I may get to see him Saturday night and, and some of Sunday. Right. And, and this was going on for, shoot, I mean, this, this was going on for ever since like I was in like first grade and then it continued on for a long time even after that. But the thing is, is there was never any question between myself or my brother, the, the support that my dad could give us. Right. On top of that, the reason why he was doing something like that, why he was working so many hours was to put food on the table to, you know, support the family the best that he could. And one of the ways that my brother and I really picked up on that and really understood that was because 
when we had the chance to actually see him, it was, he was present in that moment. He was there. It was, you know, we, in grade school, we're playing like basketball or whatnot for, for grade school teams. And he would take the time and still come and show up to the games. When I was in high school, yeah, my, I played soccer in the afternoons and like for my high school team, there were times where he would just take, you know, a couple hours off of work just to come watch me play. Right. Just the fact that, you know, he still put all that time and effort when he when he was able to be around to do that. But then also when he was at work, the fact that we understood the reason behind it, that's where that respect came in. That's where that understanding came in from my part. And that's where just the utmost, you know, inspiration and uh, I'm trying to like aspiration to be at like of that level came from. Exactly. That's amazing. Yeah. So like the fact that you kind of have that mindset already of, you know what you have to do for work, you know what you have to do and what makes you happy in that front. But when the time comes and when you have to be present for your family and for your son, you're going to be present in that moment. You're going to be there for them so that they understand, so that he, or your son understands that, you know, mom's got to go away for work sometimes, but mom is always still going to be there for you. Exactly. Exactly. And if you're, I'll say this, if you're looking for like uh, something to listen to, uh, again, because I mentioned this, I talked to Tyler from Hollow Front about this. On their recent album, he wrote a song called Dear Sons, which is coming basically from your exact same perspective, hoping that his kids know exactly why he goes out, why he goes out and tours, why he has to be away for on the road right. at times, why he does this thing and why he does it for them and that he still loves them. Say, so listen to that song, just pick up on it because you might really resonate with it. Awesome. I definitely will. That's cool. Like, just just kind of adding a little bit more, you know, just like a l- little bit more. Just the fact that, again, a lot of people go through these things. A lot of people have dealt with these as well, especially in music. But again, it's going to be a little bit different for everybody. But the fact of the matter is just talking about this, being able to, you know, pick up on your mindset where you're coming from. Oh, man, you got it right. Yay. <laughs> I'm so, glad. So, you know, at that point, you know, shoot off some fireworks. Uh, just go. Woo! And we'll have yeah. a good time with that. Good. <laughs> and now that you know you're done with tour you're back at you're back at home ever since the tour ended i think it was either late march or early april recording new music working on new music and re- just releasing inside out i mean even when you're home it's like this stuff never stops and you're just again being present in the moment when you're we have to be present in the moment with your music and then when you're with your son being present in the moment with your son and now i want to focus on the music side of this stuff because you got a new song out called inside out and i know you said there's even more to come but my god that's a lot of music Yes. Yes. Um, Well, this song Inside Out. So basically, when you last saw me, we, as I said, like we played one, uh, we were promoting our single I Am More. um, And then we also threw in there in our into our sets, uh, a song that we hadn't recorded yet. And we kind of wanted to get the fan reaction, uh, which was great, which we're very happy about. And so when we came back, we're like, okay, we're going to record this when we get off the road, whatever. But as we were doing it, we were like, you know what? Like we haven't released, like I've, I've been releasing all these singles for, for the past few years and it's been great, but I personally love albums and I love, you know, getting something like a cohesive thing. Um, and the band does as well. And so we were like, you know what? Like, let's not just stop at this. Like, like, let's just take a minute write a shit ton of songs and, um, see what we come up with. Obviously that song is going to make the cut for, for the future that you've already heard. So you, you already got a sneak peek. Um, but, um, you know, so we are working on that right now. We've been writing, I've been writing with my band a lot, which is really cool. Cause now you're going to get, you know, I, I co-write as you know, with a lot of different people because I like to keep it fresh and I like to, you know, kind of challenge myself. So I try to change it up. And then obviously I can write multiple songs with the same person or whatever it is, but I haven't really had the opportunity as much to write like with, with the band as a band. And so we're, we're kind of doing that now more than ever. And I think it's really special because you get to watch us play the songs that we also wrote, like that each person kind of wrote their part and, and it, and it's going to be something new and really awesome, I think, for the for the crowd to experience even more uh, than they have before. And then I'm also co-writing with a bunch of other people as well. And so we're getting as many songs as possible. And then hopefully in the next couple of months, we can, uh, you know, finalize and record a bunch of songs and um, have have something cool out. But in the meantime, as we're doing this, there was a song Inside Out, which is out now. Um 
that I had written and recorded and finished with Keith. And we were trying to find the right moment to release it. And I wasn't sure. I was like, am I just going to throw this in like with the songs that we're doing that we're writing now? And I was like, no, 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 this thing needs its own release. It's its own special thing. And, um, I didn't want to take away from that. So we decided to just release it now while we're still working on new music, um, to kind of give the fans something else to hear. And, and the song kept like resonating with me every time, like I was like going through my catalogs and this, I was like, okay, this song, this song, this song. (laughs) So I was like, okay, I have to just release it. And so that's what happened with that. And then there will be another single, hopefully, uh, sooner than later. Um, that has also already been completed that I can't really talk about yet, but um, it's done and ready to go. And so as soon as we get the green light to release that uh, we will as well. And then that should be able to hold people over for, you know, a big release with a whole lot of more music in between. So, yeah. Well, just before we go a little bit further on that for everyone listening. Yeah. We aren't really going to go into that next song right now because we'll do a whole nother one of these when that (laughs) song releases. Trust me on that one, because this is too much fun and we're not going to stop doing this. So, but of course, when it comes to inside out as well, it makes sense to, especially to release it as a single, because what, with the stuff that seems like, you know, you're writing right now for this collective album that you're going to end up releasing some point in the future, especially if you're writing it a lot more, you know, especially if, you know, everyone else in the band is writing their same parts as well. It kind of will have a little bit more of this understood, feel, more of this cohesive feel and compared to, you know, co-writing with some other people as well, which also works, like you said, to challenge yourself to maybe step outside your comfort zone. But it also kind of works at the same point in time too, where, okay, those could be a little more on the single side of things the ones that the whole entire band creates, that could be the whole cohesive album and the whole cohesive unit that is Madam Am. Right, exactly. So there's a little bit, there's a bunch of singles on the way and then there's something a lot bigger to follow as well. So, I mean, that's just make that just gets me even more excited it's not gonna lie it's such an exciting time i'll tell you i know i'm home and i'm not performing live which drives me nuts even though we are playing a festival next weekend so i'm I'm thrilled about that but like i'm just it's exciting it's like we're still working on a million things that sometimes it's a little overwhelming because there's like so many cool ideas and there's so many different songs it's not like okay here's one song it's like oh look at this look at this and things are flying around but like it's awesome. Like, I love it when everything's just kind of happening, even though, you know, unfortunately the fans and the listeners don't always get to see the behind the scenes, even though we're going to try to document as much as we can. And we're going to, and I try to share as much as I can on social media, but sometimes it's like, okay, we got to not worry about the rest of the world and just kind of like focus on the music so that everyone will like what we (laughs) come up with later. Uh, But it's, it's been a really exciting time. And I'm tired, but I'm really happy. <laughs> I don't sleep much right now, but I'm really thrilled about it. It's like that happy exhaustion. It's like I've been working so much and I'm just like, <laughs> but it's on everything I love to do and everything's coming together perfectly. So it's just like, exactly. Exactly. I could use a nap, though. I definitely could use a nap. Naps are nice. Uh, I'm not naps. good at them, but if I ever can do them, I like to attempt. Oh, oh, I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I, I'm not good at napping until you know. All of a sudden, it's like, okay, just a random point during the day. It's just like, all right, you know, could turn on a movie or something. It's like, okay, you know, got like a half hour or something just before I have to get going on some. Already, you know, maybe I'll just like lay down for a bit, and all of a sudden, just not supposed yeah. to sleep, and then boom, I'm out for two hours, and I wake up like, shit. Yep, that's how it works that's exactly how it works and now going into inside out specifically because you said when you were listening to this one going through your catalog it was like this one was just the one that was standing out the most you was like okay we gotta release a single why was this the one that was standing out the most you to release as a single at this time well i think i mean it's a lot about the message of the song i mean i mean i love the the music obviously because you know i co-wrote it uh but um, the message was really important to me. I felt like, I mean, that's a lot of the stuff I write about is message based. Um, and so, you know, everyone, I feel like I hope, or, or actually I hope no one has this, but everyone does has that person in their life that, you know, kind of gives them the runaround all the time and always has something that's doing something that always like puts you in this terrible position at all times. And is always just like, you know, making your life uneasy and whether it's someone close to you or just, you know, coworker, I don't know, whoever it is. Right. Um, and this song is really about like that 
like what happens if the tables turn and then you get to be in control of that situation and you like kind of giving them a taste of their own medicine. And, um, I obviously felt that way about more than one person when I wrote it. Um, and so when it came time now to release it, obviously we all have positive things going on in our lives, things you see, you know, social media, whatever, but like also people have really hard things going on in their lives and people deal with people that, you know, do these things to them. And so I was also going through that as well. And every, I feel like everyone does, cause there's always that person, whether it's a loved one or just a terrible person, you know, it could be either or, uh, in your life, um, that, that, that happens. Um, and so I just wanted people to be able to relate and people to be able to feel good about the fact that you, that they don't have that power over you. You know, you, my biggest message, as you know, especially with the I am more song and cruel heart is we are all stronger than we know. That's, I say it all the time. It sounds really cheesy, but it's really true. Like it's important to remind yourself. It's important. I remind myself even because, and I think that's the real reason why I wanted to release it besides the fact that I love those riffs in the song and I love the harmonies in the song. And so I was just like, everyone needs to hear this. It's really cool. Um, The message, because it was therapeutic to me to write it, record it, sing it and listen back to it. And so I was like, why am I not sharing this with other people who might need this, want this, or, you know, honestly, people could also not relate at all and just dig the music. And I'm totally okay with that too. You don't need to have a personal connection with the song. It's still a cool song. I think, uh, obviously I'm biased, but, um, you know, yeah. So that's a long answer. <laughs> that's a long answer, but I'd rather have the long answer than the short answer on something like this. I want to go deep in this up. I want to understand the minds behind it. I, I want to understand the message behind it because, you know, when you're listening to a song, it's like, of course, you're going to end up picking up on something of it, even if it's just on the surface level and you're just enjoying the way it sounds. Yeah, fine. That, that is perfect. That's the way you enjoy the song. Right. I always like to go a little bit deeper into it. And of course, looking at the song, listening to it, and also then seeing, you know, the little bit of the uh, press release for the message that was what you said was in there after listening a couple of times, I just... I'm not going to lie. I kind of started laughing a little bit inside and then it came outside because of how eerily close this message is to taking me back to like all like a lot of the 2010s between like 2010 and 2018 because there was a I had a person in my life that would just string me along every every day right and I always just kind of followed along with it so felt that kind of like just that unhappiness towards it and like looking back at that and just feeling what it was like to be like then like you know what happens if the tables could turn and you could feel that like how the way you made me feel and they did and they did that's what it is what happens when you get to play the game that they've been playing and you know just kind of whether you actually get to achieve that or just feeling that way and just understanding that like you are above these people that just keep doing this to you. Like it's, there's nothing wrong with you. There's just some messed up people in the world. And, you know, sometimes you're stuck with them and sometimes you're not, you know, you got to remember that. Like, so yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the message. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it goes along with the message too, of like some of the other songs, well, you know, showing that, you know, you are stronger than you think you are because if take a look for everyone listening, take a look back at certain times in your life where, you know, things weren't going so well and or maybe things were going terribly and you thought that, you know, nothing was going to get better, that this was this was it, that, you know, the happiest time in your life, you already experienced it. It was only downhill from here and there was no way to get back up to that. Think about those times and now look back at those and look at where you are now. If you're still in those times then, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from, where it still seems like, you know, you're still in the, like a dark place, but it's still, you know, as good old classic Batman quote, it's always darkest before the dawn. Again, using Batman for something. Woo! Now I kind of just went in a different direction with that. But what it basically means is, it's just, you know, we all live in those dark times, but take a look at some other dark times in your, in your life and then see where you've come from and how you got out of that. And the fact that, you know, even when the deepest and darkest depths of when you think that nothing is worth it and, you know, just life isn't worth it anymore, the strength that you have inside, you can pull you out of that to find what truly makes you happy on the inside and just, you know, start gaining back your confidence or gaining back your strength and seeing that full force to really gain the happiness that you feel inside. Bring forward the person that you are on the inside and just let that shine and, you know, 
live the one life you have the best way that you can live it, which is whatever the inside of you wants to live it as. If it's, you know, you want to end up going up on stage, being a musician, because that's what makes you happy. Hell yeah, go for it. You want to go and fight fires and help people? Hell yeah, go for it. That kind of stuff. Exactly. Now he's getting all inspirational here once again. So, yeah. (laughs) I I don't know what else to say about that. We're just getting inspirational. Like, we're going all TED Talk moments on this. I got to get, like, a big giant banner that just says TED Talk. I got to, like, go, like, three minutes and just, like, splice up these podcasts. And maybe I can make it seem like I actually put up a whole entire TED Talk with something like this. Just kind of slow up a little bit. Be like, interesting point. And bring it home. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) That's cool. Just do some stuff like that. But even when you go into Inside Out as well as like really diving into the instrumental composition of this thing, when it comes to that forward, that kind of feeling of, you know, realizing that there are people in your lives that are going to, and that, you know, you might be essentially fall victim news to them, just stringing you along, them just kind of pulling you along to the point where they're all like, they're kind of keeping you around, but they're kind of keeping you further away at the same point in time too. Just the feeling of realizing that. And then also kind of turning the tables on that so that in a way that it's, it's not necessarily revenge as I'd put it. I put it as justice because yeah. when people are going to play with you for that long, it's like all of a sudden they get a little bit of taste of what it was like. I mean, it could come off as a little bit of revenge could come off as a little vindictive, but when it comes to cross more of that, like, you know, this is going to be something that now, you know how it made me feel. Now right. you're bringing forward the more that justice to it. And maybe the person that was stringing along, whether it was someone close to you, whether it was just some random person, whoever it might be, maybe that's the thing that makes them change. Exactly. And if they don't, then at least you realize that you're better than that. And in sometimes in the moments, you don't even realize it's happening, right? It's only when something clicks and you're like, oh, this is happening. Because <laughs> I don't think everyone purposefully has these relationships with people that are like, sometimes you, you kind of get into it and you understand what's happening. But a lot of times you just something snaps, you go, Oh my God, wait, this isn't, this doesn't make sense to me. Um, and yeah. And so then you're finally like, no, wait, like, how would you feel if you got a taste of your own medicine, you know, kind of, kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. And even like, if I'm just taking a look at my crazy amount of notes I took on the song too, cause you know, I wasn't going to cheap out on this you're one. Not. Like again, jumping into especially that intro, it kind of had that like heavier melodic hard rock guitar. It did remind me of like a mix between something of like a three days grace guitar and a breaking Benjamin guitar. I'm like, Oh, you know, Keith Wallen co-writer of this track. <laughs> okay. Now I'm starting to see a little bit of that correlation there, but the second half of the intro takes that guitar as a little bit more of this lighter, not as like somewhat menacing of a flair similar more like the breaking benjamin style and i actually really like this part because the heaviness and the more menacing sound the and that intro to then create something with more of this driven anger kind of more for, not necessarily to like be like mad and anger but more of this like building up of motivation to potentially make a change in life so you're already starting towards this driving feel of yeah someone's someone in my life is you know messing with someone in my life is stringing me along and it's just like it's just not working out and it's like with that intro, you're building to that, you know, click moment to that aha moment of, wait, what am I actually doing here? Why am I actually in my, this position? This is, this yeah. is not what I'm supposed to be. This is not what life is supposed to be like. Yeah. You nailed it. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> Should we keep going then? Yeah. All righty. Then we, of course you got the verses of the song as well. And it's like, especially it feels like there's like a lower chug, but it's played on the drums and the bass. And then you get one guitar playing a little bit lower and it's right on the beat. While the while another guitar more like the lead guitar comes in the second half and plays a little more of this, what it sound like a little bit more of a melodic lighter tone over the top, a little bit similar to that second half of the intro, but it's a more drop back in the mix overall. And having a lot of these the sounds, especially from the instrumental standpoint specifically, drop back in the mix makes sense as it shows more of that building and building revelation and action to flip the script, kind of on that person that's been playing games with you. It makes us into this massive, you know difference point i do like the move it to you know show that difference between where you were and where you are going but the reason why i like just having that drawn back especially in the mix now i gotta go to the vocal section of this because the vocal set from yourself it had this more melodic but and a little bit more of the sharper tone at the exact same time too to show that building up that confidence and that chip on your shoulder that you know yeah i maybe am like i'm i don't deserve this i shouldn't be feeling this i shouldn't be living like this so got to build up that, you know, strength, got to build up that confidence and that vocal set really did that because again, 
I've gone through that point where someone's been messing with me. Someone's been playing games with me for so long. And over time, it's like you start to build up this little bit of anger and resentment. But then all of a sudden, it evolves to this confidence and chip on your shoulder when you realize what's going on in order to break free from that, potentially flip the script if you have to. The other reason why the vocal set works well is because now it was more prominent in the mix and the verses compared to the instrumentals, which were much further back. And it just made the vocals boom a lot more here. Like you felt like that building up of that confidence, that chip on your shoulder to finally break free from the person that was, you know, constantly stringing you along. You are good at this. You should maybe have a podcast. <laughs> huh, I never thought about that. Maybe I should start one. Uh, no, that was like dead on spot on. <laughs> good job. I have nothing to say like to like, you nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Thanks. Well, well, I mean, that's just, and of course, you know, you know, you're getting to that point, you know, you're starting to build up, but of course, what's going to be the big thing that's going to end up being the thing that hits, of course, it's got to be the chorus, right? Am I right? <laughs> Always. Always so, has to be the chorus. So now let's go into the chorus, shall we take a look at the notes? I looked at the chorus. It was, it does have a little bit of a rather ro- longer runtime to it with the lead guitar. It gets a little weedily over the melodic back and the rest of the instrumentals that play into to have more of this, you know, feeling of a revelation moment and this actionable moment. Now it's like, now I get why it has a little bit of a longer runtime because that actionable moment, you need to have a little bit longer runtime to really express that. And it does make you feel good when you're able to, you know, flip the script on someone that's been playing a lot of games with you over the years. And this instrumental tone has this really good feel to it because you know, it's not necessarily feels like you're getting revenge. If it was felt like you're getting revenge, it would be a lot harder, it'd be a lot angrier. But because it's more melodic and a little bit more of that flowy feel, with a little bit more weedily guitar over the top of it, it feels more like you're finally getting that happy. So you're getting that justice. And again, I've been there before. I've felt this way before. I know the feeling of it. So instrumentally, I mean, at this point, you you're really pulling this out over here. And of course, go to the vocals. When I listen to your, like the first half, again, has a little more of a longer melodic flow to the vocals, but the confidence and the chip on your shoulder feel, the tone, especially in the verses, is still felt in that more melodic. Your vocals grab a little more range later on in the chorus and creates more of this like sonic journey in a way to making it like it all happen to remove yourself from that person and from that situation. And again, mixing with the instrumentals, I really do like the feel of this and kind of how that chip on your shoulder wasn't fully sacrificed right away or that like, that, that confidence, it just wasn't sacrificed right away. It helps the overall build the song as a whole and really lets you feel it completely. Oh, awesome. Thanks. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm, gl- I'm so glad it comes across. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, it's like when you were writing this song too, it's like that you said, you know, you, you were, you had these ideas in your head and you had these moments in your head of like, you know, people that potentially have done something like this to you. So, you know, the emotion, you know, the feel of it. And when it comes to putting it out there, it's, Again, you're putting out there as that building of confidence, that building of emotion to be able to break free from that, potentially flip the script. And then the chorus, again, it doesn't feel like you're getting full on revenge for it. It feels like you're either breaking free for happiness or if you're able to flip the script, it's not, it's not a revenge thing. It's a, now you know how it feels kind of thing. Exactly. That's exactly. It's like a presentation of now, you know how it feels. Take a look at that. Yep. Yep. Maybe, maybe well, I wonder if there's like a, you know, honestly, we could probably turn this whole entire concept into a Netflix series. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I remember the South Park episode like, nah. hello, Netflix, you're greenlit. I mean, we could just pitch this to them and all of a sudden we're going to get a 13 episode season and you, you never know. We might be the next Stranger Things with it. That show's so good. Oh my God, that show's so good. We're just going to need another, we're just going to need another, you know, teenage actor to start shredding guitar in some of our, uh, in one of our, one of the episodes and, you know, make it a massive hit. There you go. See, we're just, we're just going to introduce a lot of Mad and Mayhem music to people through that way. I mean, it's 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 an idea. It's an idea. Yep. Starting a Netflix show, everybody, get ready. We're starting a Netflix <laughs> show. Hey, if if they can make if they can they can make Netflix show about anything. I mean, they've made weird reality <laughs> dating movies that are TV shows. They've made weird movies. They've made a show called Love, Death, and Robots, which my brother turned me into, which makes no sense, but is but also very cool. intriguing at the exact same time. Right. So I'm just like, right. huh? We could definitely so cool. do something yeah. like this. Absolutely. And we can, and not on that, but we can take a lot, like we could take a lot of the messages from your songs and actually create stories around them using the way that they're built up, turn them into basically Netflix episodes and we got ourselves a hit. Done. Done. Love all it. right. All right. We need, we need to start emailing Netflix or something like this. Like we got to get this done. It. I think so. I think so. I, I think so. I think so. 
And of course, this isn't the only song that you know you said. We got the other song that's coming out sometime later this year in the pipeline, which we will not be talking about because we will wait for the next episode to do that. Yeah. But like you said, you're working on a whole nother album as well. So when it comes to writing this up, especially writing it with the rest of the band as well, really having everyone, you know, contribute fully. What's that process been like? It's been really cool. Um, you know, there have been times where it's just so what what I always love about songwriting um, is it's never done or at least how I do it. We never do it the same way twice. Right. So like what's been really cool is there have been song ideas where like we'll literally just like message in our group chat like, hey, I had this riff or hey, why don't we write something about this topic or hey, I have this melody line or here's this rhythm. And so we can we do it that way. And then like we'll each just kind of like put our ideas in and then we'll get on like a zoom call and kind of like try to work it out together. And then there are times where we're in the room together here and, you know, work it out that way too. And so it's, it's, it's been really cool to be able to do it all different ways. Cause I think each song is going to benefit from their unique way of being made. Um, but it's been cool. And, um, yeah, um, I'm really excited about it. And it's really cool that I get to do that with the band. And then I'm also still doing like, you know, writing with a lot of, you know, cool people that I get to learn from as well, in addition to, and I get to learn a lot from my band too, because they're, they are so talented. And I'm, I'm so fortunate that uh, I get to like hang out with cool people that can also, you know, be amazing players too. So I appreciate that very much. Now, when it comes to just another thing with this album too, just have you thought about the release of it and how it's going to be released, especially with the fact that you have been releasing singles most of the time throughout the past couple of years? Would you do something similar to like, uh, like what Memphis May Fire did with their remade Misery album where all of a sudden it was like, they released like, I think it was like, I don't know, like an 11 song album. They released like seven of those songs kind of as singles throughout, but it was something where that album was kind of kept in the fans minds and kind of in the you know metal culture zeitgeist as it was coming out for over a year and now that it's out like they're on tour right now and i mean every one of those shows ends up being pretty much sold out that's at this point so just kind of thinking about that have you thought about the release schedule of what you would do with this album whether it be a little bit more on the single side of things given the way that you know the internet consumes music the way that these algorithms work on these streaming platforms or it'd be something where are you thinking about doing more of that like classic album, you know, release cycle where you get like maybe a one, two, three singles and then the full album, like kind of what's the idea? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, because we still have singles that we're ready to release. Um, I'm not too worried. I think once this, I think we'll really know what we're going to do with it when all the songs are done, because there might be a few songs that just like need to have their own, you know, space to shine before the album comes out and there might you know and so like we don't we really i mean obviously we don't want any fillers either which is really important especially for us for this album and this time in our career like this is the time to you know really kick ass and take names uh not that it isn't always but like this is a turning point like there's finally like we we've been fighting our way up for so many years and you know things are are slowly but surely starting to happen and then they were happening and then covid happened and then now we're starting to kind of pick up that momentum again that we had right before where we were like never home and just touring and you know doing that and so i think this is a really cool and exciting time so um i'm not really sure how we're going to do the release of everything i know we got at least one more single maybe more to release first um and then you know we'll see we'll see what comes out with the songs and and we'll see you know with the team and kind of converse and by the time it's ready we'll we'll figure it out i'm not worried first i need the songs to be amazing which some of them are already done and they already are which i think uh but i just i want everything to be awesome so that every listener and i don't want them all to be the same See, that's the other thing. You don't want to sound like, obviously we sound like us because it's us doing it. It's my voice. I'm not going to not, you know, I, I sing how I sing, mm-hmm. but I want listeners to enjoy different, different things. It, you know, once it's the same song over and over again, you don't want to listen to it. You just kind of tune it out. So that's, that's what's going to be the most fun. And so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, a couple of things on that. One, I actually do enjoy the fact that, you know, when it comes to thinking about the release schedule and how that album would be released when it comes to singles, that you kind of just like, what's the plan? We don't know yet, mostly because you're going to let just, you're going to let the album kind of dictate itself. You're going to let the nature of the beast dictate itself. On top of that, you're going to work with the rest of the band to really 
make sure that this release is going to be the best possible and get all your heads together, get all your minds together. So that's not just like, okay, we're just going to do this and that's it. And then just kind of look at a potential, you know, I wouldn't say short sighted, but just kind of like, okay, you know, we're going to do it this one way. And then that's it. No, you're keeping your options open so that you can openly pick the best option when it's time to come. Yeah. The music comes first. So the music will, will kind of help tell us what, what we're going to do once it's finished. No, absolutely. And then the other thing that you said that really piqued my head too was, you know, when you're making this music, you're making this off on the album. It's you don't want everything to sound the same. You want each of these songs to have a life, their own sound different. You know, if from the initial Sum 41 album, all killer, no filler, that's what you're looking for. All killer, no filler. And kind of thinking about it too, it's, I mean, there are albums where it's like, I've listened to them and it's just, you know, it's that sound from that band. But as you listen to it more and more, it's like, you know, sometimes those sounds kind of run together. Those songs run together and the album just doesn't necessarily stand out as much where all of a sudden kind of in, in a different light, think about, um, I'm thinking about the Bring Me the Horizon EP from 2020, that post-human survival horror EP. Uh-huh. Those songs on that on that EP were up, down, left, right, sideways, all over the place. But I still remember every single one of them. And the thing was, it still sounded like Bring Me the Horizon every single step of the way, just in a completely different light. But it was still them at the core. So if especially on this album, which I'm hoping that you do, is you achieve something like that where all these songs, you know, still have this, you know, absolute life of their own. But at the core, we still know that it's a Madam Mayhem song. We can still feel that that core principle that you have at the base of your music. Oh yeah, then we're gonna be in for something. Whoa! Yep, let's just hope it works. I feel very confident though. It's gonna work. It, it's gonna work, and especially you know, taking a look at the point in time where Earth Crew, like you say, you know, things are picking up. All of a sudden, the pandemic hit, and then for a lot of people, it's just like, mm, okay, we're gonna come to a stop. And now it's kind of picking it back up. It's the perfect time to you know, again, taking a look at the songs you're writing, you know, building up on that confidence, showing that strength that you know that you have, that's stronger inside you that you know. Sometimes people don't realize, but all of a sudden, as you start working on it, you realize just how strong you are. You're realizing how strong some of these songs can be, how the creative process is for you and the rest of the band, and how this is all going to come together. So when it comes time to release that stuff, I mean, you never know what might happen. You might all of a sudden see, you know, Kerrang! and Loudwire and Alt Press and all these other major publications pick up on it. It's just like, why have we not known about Man of Mayhem yet? And I'm just going to be looking to be like, you should have. Yes, we will always be very loyal to the people that believed in us before, you know, <laughs> the mainstream does, you know, mm-hmm. and I will be very happy if more people get to know who we are, because that means we get to keep doing what we do. But I'm very appreciative to the people, the core people mm-hmm. that, you know, loved us before mm-hmm. anything, you know, <laughs> well, even from like my perspective, I want to I want you guys to have the most amount of success that you want to have and find that period of time where all of a sudden or find that period where with the band success that you get to the point where the success that you have in the band is where is what makes you the absolute happiest. And if you want to go further than that, absolutely. But I want to have that point where all of a sudden you, you know, when it cut, when the time comes, you know, much, 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 much later in life, when we're all, you know, sitting in nursing homes, just like, you know, listening to, listening to Semper Eternal and just kind of like old, like old head, just like trying to bang my head. All of a sudden, right. ah, there goes my neck, something like that. <laughs> like we're looking back at life and we're looking back at, you know, especially from your perspective, looking back at your music career, looking back at the bands. It's just like, you know what? Maybe was that the most successful as like in terms of, you know, like the most successful bands of all time? Did I reach that Metallica level? Maybe not. But was I absolutely happy with the life I lived and the career that I had? If the answer is absolutely yes, then you won. Like you won life at that point. Yeah. But I think the, for the bands and I, you know, we don't have any like fame goals per se, but what we want to do is be able to be successful enough that we can continue doing this and continue, you know, writing, creating music, continue to tour. And so with that, you need some sort of success in order to, and, and recognition in order to be able to do that. But I think it's only for the sake, at least in our cases. And I, I think I can speak for the rest of the band. Like it's really just so we can keep doing this. <laughs> you know, we just want to keep doing this and like not stop. So um, whatever that takes to, you know, whatever notoriety that is in order to be able to, sh- to achieve that, I'll, I'll do it. And, and I'll put it this way right now, from my perspective, if that like that's what's going to make you happy, that's the level of success that's going to make you happy. Hell yeah, we're going to help make sure that that happens. And if it's like, okay, now we want to go a little bit further than that, that's going to make us happy. Boom, we're going to be right here for you and be like, let's do this shit. You're the best. You're awesome. Uh, now I'm just like, I'm getting even more amped up for the, for, you know. I know, I'm not going to be able to go to bed after this. I'm just so excited right now. 
<laughs> that's what happens anytime I do like a podcast that's later on the day. I'm just like, I'm too excited right now. What am I supposed to do? I got to get to work on this stuff because, well, sleeping, that's not going to happen. Exactly. Exactly. Honestly, I, should, I feel like I should just try and like run out and like find like a little like, you know, small shit local show that's happening. All of a sudden it's like, ooh, local hardcore show starting at nine, like, you know, 9 p.m. my time. Well, this is a way to get out that energy after this podcast that and keep it positive. <laughs> And, and then all of a sudden, you know, tomorrow I'll show up for a different podcast and all of a sudden big gash on top of my eye. And it's just like, what what happened there? I was in a good place. Yeah. I was in a mosh pit. Yep. And my head split open. How you feeling right now? Never better. Never better. I remember that time my brother came to one of my shows and um, I like told like I, this was like years ago right and so my it's my my younger he's only two years younger than me but he's my little brother right and mm-hmm. so comes to the show and he loves all the same music i love but like he he's he he looks like he does like you know he's like incognito right and so he looks super like not rock or punked out which which i love and that just goes to show you never judge a book by its cover right and so like because i have people in my life that like you'll never guess what they're into so he comes out to the show he's in obviously in the front because you know it was me playing and i slowly there's like a mosh kind of starting right behind him and i slow as i'm performing i slowly this is a mushroom head show okay so i slowly see him back like looking and back like he's he's trying to get in that mosh pit. And I'm like, you better not. And so, like, I'm making, fa- I'm performing, but I'm making faces. And I'm like, but don't, don't. <laughs> like, mom's going to kill me if you get in there. And like, because again, like, for me to do something, it's fine. But when my little brother was like, oh my God, like, I'm going to get in so much trouble. <laughs> like, and then finally on the mic, I was like, Adam, don't dare get in that pit. Mom's going to kill me. Like, get out. It was so funny. I was like, yeah, this sounds really badass for Madam Mayhem, doesn't it? Like to get her brother, just because, like, again, it's my little brother. Now he's also very tall. Like he was fine, but like, and this was his one. Well, he's always been to all my shows, but this was like one of his first. I mean, this was his first Mushroom Head show, and they're awesome, and their fans are awesome. But like, you know, they know they know how to throw down, and I had never seen him throw down, so I didn't know what to expect. Um, he he was great he did a great job everyone was very respectful um i was freaking out on stage um yeah so uh that was fun i can't believe you actually i called him out because he well the good news like the show didn't stop like i'm pretty sure someone was soloing but like you know how sometimes like when i'm on stage i'm like hey what's up oh hey i see you how are you i'm like hey adam get out of that pit like right now like it was like he was like are you joking right now like you can't do i was like you're my little brother and uh mom and dad are very upset and they're not gonna let you come to any more of my shows if you get hurt so but he didn't everything was fine they're super cool like everyone was awesome but that was like one of the first, this is a long time ago, but that was a very early on experience where I was like very nervous to bring my brother to a show um, for good reason, obviously, but everything turned out fine. But yeah, when you, every time you, I think Mosh Fit, I always think about that and I'm just like, oh my God, crazy. Can't Holy that. shit. That, that, that just makes me like smile and laugh. Isn't that more. great? Just, well, yeah. if, like from my perspective too, if all of a sudden like I'm in the pit and I hear someone yell out to someone like, hey, you better not go in that pit. I'm just looking, I'd be looking around like, wait, what's going on? And just kind of just, you know, that's going to no, be luckily, something. Luckily, no one really paid attention. So it was great. And like nothing stopped and it kept going. But like he heard it and that's all that mattered. He knew I was talking to him and I could see, because again, we're, we're siblings, like we know each other's like facial expression. Like I knew, I knew what he was going to do. He did it. And I had to call. I was like, Get the hell. <laughs> it was great. Just kind of had that look of just like, I'm just going to. Um, He's just like looking around. Like, gonna, I'm just going to. I was like, you better gonna... not. You better. Yeah. He did. See, see, like if that was me and all of a sudden I heard someone like, oh, Kevin, you better not get in that pit. I would just go, <laughs> watch me. Woo. Yep. Yeah. See, yeah, he did. Yep. Yeah. yeah. This the early yeah that's like overprotective big sister right there that's that's what that was but he was fine and now he can run into whatever pit he wants to I'm totally confident he'll be fine I'll but say first so I was uh, nervous I'll say now it's like you know if you're if you're playing a show and the pit gets going all of a sudden your brother is there and he turns around instead of saying Adam don't you go near that pit and be like 
you better get in that pit, otherwise I'm going to be really, really angry at you. <laughs> right. Next time, be like, at, get in that pit. No, <laughs> but, you know, yeah. And at that point, too, I'm hoping I'm at that show because I'll be the one in the pit just looking at him going, come on. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and then he'll probably charge right at me and I'll just be like, all right, let's have some fun with this. And then, of course, probably someone will end up getting knocked down and then we'll look at each other. We'll pick each other back up and then we're just going to go around again and have a good time. Exactly. That's what I love about at least our fans and that the fans with bands that we've opened for is everyone so far has been really good to each other. No one's knocking people when they're down already and everyone's helping each other up. And, and that just, you know, you have to be at a rock show to, or a metal show to see it. Cause if like someone who's not into this, it goes, Oh, you were in a pit. It, like, is everyone just beating each other up? It's like, no, no, you, you need to come and see what this community is and see what it really is before you say anything or do anything or, you know, so I, I just, yeah, everyone's really awesome. And I'm really thankful to our fans for, for being very cool. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when those, you kind of have, it's, it's, you, you have to understand kind of like what's going on in there and understand why people are doing this. It's because that's the way that we're really enjoying these shows. That's the way we're really feels. That's the way we're spending the time in the moment. And it's a great way to just, you know, for us just to kind of let any kind of, you know, anger out there. Having, we're not throwing fists or anything, you know, it's all, it's pushing in the shoulder checks and that kind of fun stuff. And of right. course, someone falls down, you know, people are coming up, picking them up. There's other people like me that'll come across, go like this, like around them. So it's like, you know, no one accidentally runs into them because I've had that happen to me a couple of times on accident, though. I have to put that on accident. But like, especially what you said, there's a lot of people that look at it and be like, you know, you went in a pit. What the heck? Right. If, if you end up at, ever going to a rock show and going, if you don't have to go in, I say this, stand close to the edge of one because after a song is over, watch and see what happens because you're seeing people high five each other. Yeah. You're seeing people give each other hugs. I mean, I remember the first pit I jumped into, literally I was in there for maybe two minutes for the last song of the set. That was it. First time I ever jumped in, first time I ever the confidence suit. The amount of like, like high fives and bro hugs that I got from people was astounding. It was just like, whoa yeah this was awesome yeah we need more of this exactly exactly we, it's like in this world we need the community of the pit and then <laughs> right things will be so much better and then we need you also yelling and i'm getting that pit you better get in that pit now i told you one time not to but here's the thing now. though like with him if i tell him to do something he's not gonna he'll do the so i can't tell him to do anything anymore because now he's an adult and he's like, you can't tell. And he's also way taller than I am. So he's like, you can't tell me what to do anymore. It's like, all right, fine. But yeah, but if, if, if it's me, if it's the pit's going, I'm at that show, it's be like, Adam, take off the guy in the brewer's hat. And he'll be like, hey, buddy, how's it going? <laughs> I don't know. Might, he might take it as a challenge and be like, it's time. I don't know. We'll see. I'm just happy when, when family gets to come to shows at all. We don't get to play at home as much as we used to. So it's not as as frequent. For some reason, some of the tours we've been getting on lately don't play in New York area for some reason, but, which is fine. Um, but yeah, when I was starting out, we played in New York all the time, obviously. Um, and then a lot of these national and then when we, we toured internationally, obviously, we didn't play here. And then a lot of the, some of the national tours we've been on, at least. They didn't, they didn't make it into the city. I mean, we've had a few shows over the past few years in the city, but like it'd be nice to like, you know since since the pandemic we haven't and so it would be really nice to kind of kind of do that again and be able to yell at my brother from the stage again <laughs> <laughs> well then that leads me to one other question is i'm again i saw the tour that you had with uncured and with versus me and now we're talking about you know live shows you guys playing in new york kind of want to get back to that like play a hometown show or whatnot. what's the live show outlook look like for mad and mayhem because well let, let, let's just be honest. I, I would really like to be at a show once again, seeing you play. And also, you know, if it means, you know, all of a sudden your brother's there and you yell at me, get in the pit and take out the guy in the brewer's hat and me wave it. I'm like, hey, buddy, I want to see that happen. So what's the live show outlook look like for Mad and Mayhem going forward? Well, we have two festivals right now uh, on the books. We're doing um, the Midsummer Music Fest in Minnesota next weekend on July 23rd, uh, where you get to play the main stage with Any Given Sin and Buck Cherry and a bunch of other really cool bands. Um, so that's exciting. September 24th, we'll be in Minnesota again, uh, doing the KFML Radio uh, End of Summer Bash, which we're super pumped about. Um, 
those guys have always been so good to us. So we're really, we're really pumped to go, to go there. Um, and then we're hoping um, in the fall to throw on a bunch of more shows in between if we can make it happen. Um, again, we are working on the album. And so that's kind of taking priority. Uh, but when I'm not on stage, no one's happy around me. For, so like <laughs> I need to play shows. Um, so there will be more shows uh, that we will announce soon. And then, you know, hopefully once, once the new album is done, we can kind of go full force again, but there will be shows here and there, maybe a little small tour, you know, coming up in the next few months. So everyone just keep an eye out on madamayam.com. We'll be able to announce as everything gets finalized. You keep everyone keep an eye out for that because I'm keeping an eye out for that. Cause if I see a man of mayhem show that I'm able to attend, you better believe I'm going to be there. So, um, please come back to Wisconsin. Oh my God. I would love to please. Wisconsin. Every, everyone's so awesome there. Oh my God. Yeah. Anytime I can go back there, I'll be there for sure. We just like our, we just like our music. We like our beer and we like just having a good time. So yep. My kind of people. I love it. Absolutely. So I'm going to, I'm going to be, you know, every, I'm gonna, I always, you know, keep a look and just see when people release tours and stuff, release schedules and stuff, because I mean, like I said, wait, I'm, I'm aiming for 50 shows this year and I'm not talking like, Oh, 50 different bands. I'm talking about, you know, just shows that I'm seeing just days. I'm going to shows. I want to see, I'm going for 50. Okay. Nice. If it means that, you know, all of a sudden to get to that 50 means seeing Mad and Mayhem one more time. You better believe I'm going to be like, hell yeah, that's exactly what I want. I want to go see the show. If that's number 50, let's do it. Thank you. Yes, let's hope, let's try to make it happen. We'll do our best. We'll, we'll, we'll do our best. Even if it's like number 49 or 48, well. What if it's 51, though? If it's 51, then we, we overachieved. That's the thing. <laughs> we overachieved then. There you go. Awesome. Then, then that means I have to go even more in 2023. I'm just going to be like, oh, God, how am I going to go more than like you say I have to go like up to 60 or 70. I'm just going to be like, I need some more money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's hard being a rock fan, isn't it? I know from experience, you spend a lot of money on tickets, but it's always so worth it. I always do it. I'm like, oh, like it hurts initially. And then you're just so excited for the show. And then you're there and you're like, oh, yeah, OK, I get oh. it. It 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 all it always hurts initially whenever I see the yeah. price. I'm just like, oh man, this is uh, this is gonna take a little bit of a chunk out of my bank account. But then I'm like, wait a minute, that show's not for like two three months. So by the time that show actually comes, I'm gonna forget all about the money I actually spent on it. Like right, like there's shows I've spent money on. It's like, oh, I've you know I spent almost a hundred bucks to go to that show based because of how big of, the, of a show it was. But then I look back, I'm just like. Wait, I already spent that money. Like it's it's already gone. I've already like made peace with it. So now I'm just focused on enjoying it, like and enjoy the show when it comes up and then just well, throw down and hopefully hear the hear someone on stage go, Hey, you get in the pit, and all of a sudden just me wave and be like, Come here. It's right here. Yep. Come on. Yep. Is <laughs> that some fun with that? Well, as we bring this podcast to conclusion, you know I always like to give you a chance to whatever you want to say, plug whatever you want to plug, promote whatever promote at the end of the podcast. So, man and mayhem, the floor is yours. Well, uh, everyone check out madammayhem.com uh, for any new updates and things that are coming your way because there will be a lot of it. Make sure to please, please, please listen to our new song, Inside Out, uh, streaming everywhere you stream music. Um, and yeah, just keep an eye out. There's a lot of cool stuff coming. Keep an eye out. A lot of cool stuff coming. So now it's time for this podcast with another three things. So first things first. Yes, Inside Out is available now. And there's going to be more new music on the way in the future. On top of that, there's you know shows are going to be on coming your way in the future. So you want to know about all this stuff. So the best way to do it is to follow Man and Mayhem on all social platforms. Watch the music videos that Man and Mayhem has put out there. Go to the website to go check out everything you need to check out there when it comes to potential tour dates, potential release of new music, and of course to get some merch as well. And also you're going to want to stream the music, download the music, buy the music, and just support Man and Mayhem in any way you can. So you're going to want to go do all that. So let me help you out with that. Go to the description of the podcast. See where it says Find Man and Mayhem Online. Links and labels for socials, website, where you can get the merch, where you can get tickets for those shows, where you can stream it and the rest of the music, buy it, download it, listen to it, all that kind of stuff is be down there for you. So go and click those links and go like their stuff, subscribe, follow, share, listen, buy, whatever it is. Support Man and Mayhem. That's the way to do it. Got all the links there for you. So do it. Thank you. And now it's time for number two. Well... Number two is always the uh, the first rounds on me promise, which from your last show, I was able to fulfill that promise. You did. I appreciate that. You did. Good job. And now because it's the second time you've been on, we're running it back. So next time we see you perform live, first rounds on me once again. Aw, that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, we're, <laughs> we're, I'm, I'm running this back because, well, again, it's always one of my favorite things to do, be able to not only, you know, connect with the RSM, the podcast, be able to connect with you, but also continue to support the bank and support you. And also as a way to say, thank you for taking your time to be on the podcast to, you know, talk about music with me, talk about your music with me. And just, you know, again, when it comes to like sharing that happiness in music, it's like, thank you for, you know, allowing me to do something like this. So again, that's always a way to say thank you. Oh, well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Well, again, thank you. And now it's time for number three, where I can't end this episode with a goodbye for a good number of reasons. One, I mean, I've seen you perform live once. This is your second time on the podcast. So is this going to be the last time we ever see each other? Hell no. Nah. Mostly because of two reasons. One, I made another promise to you and I do want to see you perform live even before I made that promise to you. So I'm going to see you perform live once again. And another thing is, I know you got more new music coming out. So when the new music comes out, guess what we're doing? We're doing this once again and twice again and maybe three times again and maybe even more again. However many times it takes. We'll take as long as it takes. Yes. So, you know, this cannot be goodbye, Man of Mayhem. No, 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 no. This is going to be, I'll see you later. <laughs> Well, folks, I've interview with Madam Mayhem once again. Her brand new single, Inside Out, is available now on all platforms. And there's more new music coming on the way. Is she going to be back in the podcast when more new music comes out? <laughs> yes. Yes. On top of that, they've got shows coming up as well. Two festivals up in Minnesota. On top of that, more shows coming along the way. So you want to make sure you support Madam Mayhem. Make sure you're in the know with everything. And make sure you're following along with the band every step of the way so go to the description of the podcast where it says find man and man online where you can follow the band on all social media accounts where you can watch your youtube videos where you can stream music buy music download music find where they're going to be playing near you get those tickets and also buy some merch as well so please buy some merch because it's man and mayhem yeah you're gonna want to buy some merch yeah am i singing weirdly yeah yeah also be sure to follow the corporate rush podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as well for all your crazy podcast content. On top of that, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast where you can watch it on YouTube or you can listen to it on Spotify, Podcast, iRadio, Amazon, and wherever else you can get your podcast as well. So please subscribe. Please continue to support us. And if you're already supporting us and sub subscribe to us, <laughs> thank you. And if you are just subscribing now, welcome to the family and thank you. If you're not sure of the podcast, you watch this one, and you're like, I don't want to subscribe. Will you please reconsider? But also for, you know, stop by watching the podcast, listen to it. Thank you. Thank you guys for, you know, supporting this stuff. This is like my favorite thing to do. So let's just keep this rolling, keep this going. I'm, I'm so happy we get to keep doing this. Again, I want to thank our sponsors, podcast for this podcast. Again, remember, Manscaped. Oh, yeah. You know, like they said, dive first, head first in summer. The rest of summer, I should say, the Boxers 2.0 to make sure that any day is like a day at the beach and no day turns into swamp day. Remember, 20% off on free shipping by going to manscaped.com forward slash CPP. And you can also use the discount code CPP at checkout for that 20% and free shipping. Remember, we are all sponsoring the When We Were Hungry Music Festival, October 2021st in Las Vegas. Tickets are on sale now, so go to WeAreHungryFestival.com to go get your tickets. Marshals of the Pit, Pancakes of the Pit, Memes of the Dreams. We'll see you out there. Thank you once again to Man and Mayhem for being in the podcast. I love having her on the podcast. We'll talk about so many different things around music with her. And I was not expecting her to talk about the time when she told her brother not to go in the pit, and he just did it anyway. That was a great story because I'm just like, that. that's me. Like, that's what I would do. If someone told me, Kevin, don't go in that pit, I'd be like, huh, bye. Hey. So on that note, that's going to be for me, guys. Thank you for listening to the Chord Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I am every single one of the big, healthy, and hearty. See y'all!